Hello, SMP Nation. Blaine Austin here at Sewing Machines Plus, and welcome to our Thursday live show. And we hope that everybody out there had a fantastic Christmas, and uh, and I hope you're getting ready for a new year because it's coming up pretty quick. And guys, we cannot wait till 2023 because we have a whole bunch of new stuff lined up for you. And uh, anyway, this morning we got uh, kicking it Kennedy in the studio. We got Big Daddy Kyle. Hello. And uh, we don't have a camera on him this morning, I think, because Roger yeah. has got the camera and he's over at the uh, San Marcos classroom with, today with Deb. And guys, our show today is, I think you probably saw the title, it's the Straight Stitch Shootout. And uh, so uh, bullets are going to be flying, Kyle. Yeah, you got to do finger guns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have your finger guns going. It's uh, it's going to be going. So Joanne Banco said, hello, Blaine. Well, hello, Joanne. Glad you're on this morning. Again, uh, Lisa is on. Nice shirt, Blaine. Thank you all. This is my wife picked this out. Michelle picked this out for me. And uh, so I, I I really like it. And uh, Carol Lombardi is saying, hello, Kyle, Kennedy, Roger, and Blaine. So good okay, morning, good Carol. Time on the cruise, Carol. Yes. Yeah, she went on a cruise, didn't she? She did. And uh, we have uh, Sasquatch up in Pennsylvania watching. So good morning. Have uh, Sherry Higby in Oklahoma watching. Ginger Israel. Happy New Year to Ginger. She's uh, local. She's in San Diego. We have uh, Celeste Wall in uh, Illinois. Cindy King out in Texas. How y'all doing out there in Texas today? Have uh, Mary Daniel in South Carolina. Uh, Linda Von Bank says, love Deb's demos. Man, I do too, Linda. And we have... Uh, Barbara Mangle in San Diego, local here. And uh, we have Brenda, and uh, she's over in Missouri uh, watching today. So hello. Good morning, Brenda. And I know, uh, depending on what part of Missouri she was in, she got hammered pretty hard last week. And uh, oh, and sorry I wasn't here last week, guys. Thursday, um, I told everybody, I think, on our, our countdown to Christmas, we would have our show Thursday. But I kind of forgot that I was going to Louisiana uh, to spend Christmas with the uh, in-laws, which we really didn't spend Christmas. Michelle flew out on Monday and then I joined her. I flew out on Thursday and went and, and met her. And we had Christmas with her family on Friday and then her and I flew back on Christmas Eve. So, uh, how was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, do I need to tell y'all about my adventure? Do I need to tell everybody? I think you should. Oh my gosh. So I had the, uh, the craziest, thing happened. So uh, Michelle and I had flights from Baton Rouge to Houston and then Houston to San Diego. So we fly into, uh, we left, I don't even remember what time it was. I think it was like four o'clock something uh, central time from Baton Rouge, flew to Houston, got to Houston. As uh, soon as we were walking, going on the tram to go to our gates, I got a text saying, your gate has been changed. So we go to the new gate. We're sitting there, we get a text message and uh, that it's, it's delayed. So then the fire alarms go off. Everybody's running, freaking out. So uh, they got that solved. We'll send they, then they send us to another gate. They said they've got another gate change. So we go to that gate. We get down there. They send another text and then make an announcement. Oh, come back to the original gate. They change it again. So the plane finally gets there. Well, we're sitting with the flight crew. They're sitting right around us. We're kind of across the hall from our gate and we're sitting with the flight crew that came to go on the, this flight that we're going on. So the flight finally gets there and uh, our crew goes and gets on. And about five minutes later, I see them coming right back out of the, the uh, gate, coming back out of the tunnel. And uh, I told Michelle, I said, that's not good. So they came back over and said, I said, what's going on, guys? They said, well, our, the plane has a substantial fuel leak, so they grounded it. And so they are going to get a new, new airplane for us, which, as you all know, when they get a new airplane, they don't have them just sitting around to use. You have to wait till one of the flights is ending for the night, and then you get it. So now it's probably, I don't even remember, 10 o'clock or something. And... Uh, so then we have to change terminals. So we had to go back, get on the tram, go to a completely different terminal, new gate, finally get out of uh, Houston and uh, uneventful flight to San Diego. Um, however, we're coming in on our approach. You know, we're looking down, we can see the runway, we're getting ready to land. And all of a sudden the pilot full powers it, 
pulls out real hard and everybody in the plane just kind of like looking at each other. And I told Michelle, so well, that he aborted the landing. So we, you know, 10 minutes later, he comes on and says, Hey, I aborted the landing. Didn't tell us why. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we flew around, came back in and landed. So we're finally there. Now we're worrying about getting an Uber because it's getting close to midnight uh, California time and it's Christmas Eve. So we finally get down there. The bags start coming out. Everybody gets their bag but me. Lost my bag. So anyway, we finally get the bag. Got home at 1.30 in the morning. And so that was my adventure, Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy time. So uh, Susie is saying, dang, Blaine, I hope you had a Mountain Dew. <laughs> what, did I, what did I get you, Blaine? I got Blaine Mountain Dew and Reese's for all of his troubles that he went through. So. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we uh, Michelle and I got home and Kennedy had went to my house and left me a uh, six pack of Mountain Dew and some Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups on, on the counter. <laughs> uh, David Freeman says, love your shirt. Tell your wife she has good taste. She does have good taste, David. And uh, thank you for saying that. It uh, She's a great decorator. She has an eye for, for stuff like that. So, yeah, I just kind of let her, you know, do what she wants to do when she's decorating and things. And so uh, anyway, that was my adventure, guys. And y'all, I apologize if I cough or anything. I, I Oh, I forgot to tell them the last thing. I got sick. So I started getting feeling bad Saturday, uh, Christmas Eve in the airport. And then Monday, I didn't come to work. And if I don't go to work, you can ask everybody that works at SMP. If I don't come to work, something is really bad. I'm really, really sick. So I was really sick Monday. Missed work. And uh so I'm still kind of getting over it. So I apologize if my voice is a little hoarse for cough, but uh, uh, said crazy night. Bernadette Evans says, really glad you got back home safe. Well, thank you, Bernadette. I am glad we made it safe too. And, and uh, so everything it was, it, I said, you couldn't scripted a movie any funnier. We just had to yeah. laugh. You know, it was like all this crazy stuff that happened on Christmas Eve. But the good thing about it was we made it home. So many, there was uh 4,700 flights, I think, was it canceled? Oh. It was something crazy nationwide. All the flights were canceled. And, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, we get I got to Baton Rouge. You know, we're used to, we, we left, I left here Thursday. It was 76 degrees. Uh, get to Baton Rouge and it's 20 degrees. And uh, that big cold front, it went across, uh, you know, most of the United States uh, hit them. And I know that that was minor compared to everybody up in the Northeast that got hit with the snowstorms and up in the St. Louis area and all that in Chicago, you know, y'all got snow and real cold temperatures. And I know my mother Marietta up in Bono, Arkansas, up by Jonesboro, they got, you know, five degrees. It was like five degrees weather and they had snow, a little bit of snow. And uh, so they had some pretty bad weather up in that area too. So hope that y'all are all doing well. And I hope some it's uh, places it's warming up for you now. Uh, but guys, we got some great things uh, uh, for the show today. And but before we get too deep in, I'll tell you about some dates. You know, I always tell y'all to keep a little pencil and a, a, a notepad handy so you can write some dates down. So uh, next Thursday, it's going to be an important show. And I will hope that everybody can, can attend. Uh, we're going to have our 100th episode. Can y'all believe we've had 100 I episodes? I cannot believe it. So we're going to have a little party and we hope that y'all will join us and we're going to have some really cool giveaways. We're going to have some special guests on and we're just going to play and talk and, and have a good time. And uh, so we hope you'll, you'll join us next Thursday. Again, same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Uh, Central. And uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, Jenny saying 100. Woohoo. So it is. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, that's not counting all the big, you know, uh, sh the big shows and like the special showcase shows, that's just our regular uh, SMP live shows. So we've done a lot of them. And Arnell's saying 100. Wow, it is, Arnell. It's, um, it's crazy how, how time has flown by. And, and, you know, we started doing this actually before the pandemic even hit. And, and then, you know, during the pandemic, it just got bigger because, you know, people were stuck at home. And so anyway, it's been, been a good time and, and we're going to have fun. And then the 12th, I don't know exactly what we're doing on January the 12th yet, but then what's the next date, Kennedy? The, the 19th. The 19th. So the 19th, y'all write this date down too. This is going to be really cool. Uh, 
Yolanda says, congratulations on the 100. Thank you, Yolanda. Um, so the 19th of January, we're going to have another special show, and it's going to be a Baby Lock showcase. And what makes this show a special show, Baby Lock is releasing uh, a bunch of more machines that we can actually sell online now. So, you know, just kind of let you all know how kind of the networks work with the manufacturers. Some manufacturers have certain products that they allow us to sell online, and some of them you can only buy them in their local retail stores. So like some of the models we have, we can, you can only come into our San Marcos or our San Diego store and buy them, but you can't buy them and order them online. So they, you, know, you physically have to walk in the stores. Uh, so Baby Lock, you know, uh, this whole year in 2022, they've released you know, throughout the year several times quite a few machines that we could sell. Well, now they're coming out, they're going to release eight more. And so we're going to highlight those uh, and tell you all about those machines. Uh, we're going to have some specials on them. And so y'all don't want to miss uh, the 19th because we're going to talk about those machines. And, <clears throat> you know, we'll, we'll tell you kind of what we like and, and what we don't like and all those good things about them. And uh, so uh, can't wait for that. That's going to be a really cool show. And then, you know, again, we're going to have more baby lock machines online now that we can sell. So that's going to be a great thing. Uh, and then, um, what's the next date? It was a 26. Okay. Is, yes. So the 26, write this, this is a really important date, January the 26th. It is fabric Palooza. You don't want to miss that show. And it's going to be probably plan on this everybody. Cause it's probably going to be a two to three hour show. It's not going to be one of these hour shows it is fabric Palooza. And we are going to have a huge fabric blowout of some really high quality fabrics at huge discount discount pricing and uh, we'll have that and that's going to be a great show and we're going to have an overhead camera over over my desk where, where i'm going to show you the fabric and get a really good shots of it uh we're going to have them very easy we're gonna have them numbered like one through whatever so you can pick the fabric real easy on our product page and find it so we're going to make it really easy so you don't have to worry about the names and, and remember all the names and, and the company who makes it. Uh, we're going to tell you all that, but it'll be easy to pick. And we're going to sell them in one and three yard increments. Um, so and they'll be pre-bagged, folded and bagged. So it's going to be a, a really neat thing. We've never done fabric on uh, on the show. So we're going to do the fabric and, uh, you know, we're going to blow a bunch of fabric out. And so. Y'all can really uh, take advantage of this and kind of update your inventory stash of fabric. <laughs> and uh, I know y'all probably have plenty right now, but you know, like they say, you can never have enough fabric. So uh, Linda Brooks says, Fabric Palooza. Yay. So Linda, get ready. And y'all start making room right now for new fabric to come in your, your sewing rooms because I'm telling you, we have some great fabric. And some of this fabric, is also, I mean, some of the latest fabric out. It just came out. We've got them all cut up in, in pre-cuts, and, and it's going to be pretty cool. So I uh, need a new shelf for that fabric. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's Terry Joe. And uh, so that's going to be on the 26th. So kind of those are some dates, guys, that are coming up. You know, next week's the 100th episode. 19th is going to be the Baby Lock, and then the 26th is Fabric Palooza. So we're going to have some really good uh, shows coming up. Now, next Thursday, I'm not sure what we're doing yet on that show, but we'll have a, another good uh, content for you. I know we're working on some stuff right now to, for that show next Thursday. And then, Kennedy, what you've got going next Tuesday? Do you next know yet? Next Tuesday, not yet, but we do have a fun Valentine's event coming up with Evie Hawkins. And, um, February? A bit of Stitch, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so wait, Kennedy out. doesn't have her show completely finalized yet for next Tuesday, but make sure y'all come and take over Tuesday. On Tuesdays, Kennedy hosts that show. We always have that somebody comes into the show and they just basically take over the show. And uh, so that'll be on Tuesday next week at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 12 p.m. Central. So, all right, guys, enough jabbering. Let's get uh, talking about machines. So today, guys, we're talking about the straight stitch shootout, and we've got three sh machines that we've picked. And Deb has got all three machines this morning. And we're going to talk a little bit to Deb about, you know, what she likes, some of the features. And so we've got a Juki uh, this morning. We have a Janome and we have a Brother. And they're all three straight stitch machines. And then we're also going to talk about a little table that we, are, we have uh, on special today. It's called the Gidget. And it's from Arrow Cabinets. 
We have the Gidget 1 and the Gidget 2. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we've got uh, some pretty cool things uh, pricing on that too. So if you've kind of been looking for a table for one of your machines, we could probably help you out today. So let's go to the San Marcos classroom. And y'all help me welcome Deb Donovan to the show. So hello, Deb. Hi, Lane. How are you this morning? I'm great. How are you? I'm making it. I'm, 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 I told everybody, you know, if I start coughing on them, cause I'm, as you know, I'm a little sick, mm -hmm. but, uh, I've been drinking a lot of water and hopefully I don't get coughing too much and, and, uh, and trying to take some, uh, you know, cough medicine and different things to help me kind of calm me down a little bit, but hopefully I can get through this. But I know that you and I talked a lot about the straight stitch machines and, and, you know, I've done videos in the past where, you know, we've had like the TL-18, TL-15, mm -hmm. we've done the 2010 from Juki. We've done a lot of the straight stitch, you know, the PQ-1500, that's one of the machines we're going to highlight this morning from Brother, uh, is a fantastic machine as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about those machines. And so I know this morning you're going to start out with the Juki. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm excited to see your take on this because I don't know if you remember this, but you remember back when I did the, uh, the, quilt challenge. Uh, and I did that table runner. Oh you know, yeah. I, I used the Juki 2010 to sew all that table runner together. And, you know, it is just a fantastic machine. And so that's the one you're going to highlight this morning. And so I'm pretty pumped to see what your take on it. And, and because I really like that machine as well. And we've got, you know, the pricing on these machines today is really good. And mm -hmm. so I'm gonna let you go ahead and take it away. And then uh, when you get finished with the Juki, you can come back to me and I'll tell everybody about the Juki and what kind of special we got going on it today. All right. That sounds great, Blaine. You do sound like you're feeling a little bit better than you did the last couple of days. So I'm glad about that. So the first, I mean, I love the straight stitch machine. They are that, that workhorse in the sewing machine industry. We've all had straight, I mean, I have a straight stitch featherweight at home that dates from the 50s and I still will pull it out and use it. And it has one of the best stitches that I've ever seen. But you might want to wonder um, why you need a straight stitch machine because it only does a straight stitch. And you've got a point there. But as I was trying to kind of go through this in my head, I realized that it's the straight stitch machine, the straight stitch is a tool. And if you look at how much you use your machine, far and away, well over 90% of the time, you're probably in a straight stitch. And then the second st most common stitch is probably going to be a zigzag. And then from there, it depends on if you're a garment maker or a quilter, whether you're into blind hems or blanket stitches, and then you kind of go down from there. But a straight stitch is the stitch that you do use most of the time. Even though you've got 300 stitches on there, you use one stitch for most of your sewing. So that straight stitch, having a good straight stitch is kind of like my favorite pair of scissors. I have a small scissor problem. I'm sure my daughter could tell you how many pairs I have, although I can't. But I have dozens of pairs of scissors that I've all bought kind of for a specific purpose. They felt good in my hand at the time. But there's one pair of scissors that I always go back to. This is the pair of scissors that I always start with. And if those pair of scissors don't do the job, then I will go looking for other scissors. And since I have them right here, these are my favorite scissors in the world. They are um, they're Kai scissors. I can tell you everything that I love about them. They are serrated. They have big handle holes. They feel fabulously weighted in my hand. These are my perfect scissors, the ones I go for first. If these don't work, then I will put them down and I will grab something else. And my family knows that any scissors that look like these are do not touch land. They can use the orange handled Fiskars all they want, but when it comes to my Kai's, you're taking your life into your own hands if you want to cut wrapping paper with them. So a straight stitch machine is kind of like that. I have a dozen pairs of scissors in my house, more than that really, but that straight stitch, these Kai scissors are my first thing that I go to. They do what I want them to do beautifully 95% of the time. Sometimes I'll go for dressmaker shears or embroidery snips, but those are the pair of scissors that I will tear apart my cutting table for instead of reaching for a second pair of scissors. And so that's kind of what a straight stitch machine is. 
it's that one stitch and that one machine that you're going to use almost all of the time. It can't usually be the only machine that you have, but it is quite often the machine that you're going to want to use the most because it does have a beautiful straight stitch on it and it does exactly what you want it to. So the reason that these guys make such beautiful stitches is because they are straight stitch machines. The needle goes up and down in the same spot every single time. So, cause there is no zigzag, there is no buttonhole, there is no blanket stitch. Because the needle's going up and down in the same spot all the time, the engineers were able to make it so that the bobbin and the needle are in the best spots relative to each other for us to get the best stitch. When it comes to putting zigzags and those other things in there, now the needle's not always in the same place. The needle could be uh, seven, seven miller, uh, some machines have five, seven or nine millimeter stitch widths on them. So that's almost on a nine millimeter machine, that's almost three eighths of an inch of movement that the needle can have in there. So the bobbin needs to be able to pick up the needle over a three eighths of an inch kind of travel span as opposed to a straight stitch where it always has to be in the same spot. So that's why you'll sometimes see that some of your decorative stitches need a little bit of adjustment in their tension because there's a little bit more slack in the bobbin thread as the needle's going down and up and pulling that bobbin thread up. But with a straight stitch machine, we don't have that problem, which is why everybody still loves the stitches that are on our old featherweights and our Singer 201s and you know the, all the original old straight stitch machines because there's no extra slack or play in the thread that's on them. So I've got the Juki up here first for me today. I chose to do it first because it's, if you've watched us before, it's a machine that we've shown you before. So you maybe are slightly familiar with it. The Juki 2010 is kind of the workhorse of the family. Juki has a series of TL machines. They all have slightly different features, but the 2010 is by far and away the most popular one. So that's the one that we brought on screen for you today. Um, Juki is actually a commercial industrial machine factory or a company. They started out making machines for the garment industry and then backed into the home sewing business. So this machine truly does have industrial roots and will last pretty much forever. I mean, we're still using some of these featherweights from the 30s and this one's probably going to last another 50 years as well. It is a mechanical machine. It doesn't need to have a lot of bells and whistles on it because it is a straight stitch machine. So we can have, let it be a mechanical machine. Because it's a mechanical machine, I've got this dial right here to adjust the stitch length. This, is, this dial is one of the very few pieces of plastic on the entire machine because even the housing on this machine is all metal. So here is where you can adjust your stitch length. Zero to six millimeters stitch length. I've got it dialed in at two and a half. That's my favorite stitch length. And so I've got all the machines that I'm going to show today set to two and a half. So they're all doing exactly the same thing. When it comes to the top end, five, six, seven millimeters long stitches, that's kind of your basting stitch. So that shouldn't be a determining factor in what machine you choose to look at. But the ability to adjust this stitch length is definitely one of them. And to be able to kind of fine tune it and not just stuck, be stuck at two, two and a half or three. I like to fine tune it a little bit. The thicker the fabric I'm going through, I want a thicker, a wider stitch so that I've got some more thread for that stitch to make. I've got a clean front right here, which means that all my buttons are right here on the right hand side of the machine. <clears throat> We tell you that this is a mechanical machine, and when some people think mechanical, everybody thinks that it is, that everything, that there's no switches on it anywhere. Everything's a dial. It has electronics built into it, but this is not a computerized machine. There's not a computer chip running everything in it. But these basic electronics give me all those key features that I'm accustomed to having that I really kind of would be sad to not have on a machine of any at any style these days. So the first one is I've got my needle up and down control right here. So on a true mechanical machine, like my old featherweight, it's a crapshoot where the needle stops. You start, you take your foot off the foot pedal, the machine stops. It could be up, it could be down, it could be halfway up and down, 
but I have an electronic button here that's going to let me control whether the needle stops up or the needle stops down. And that's a big deal to me. Um, needle up and down is actually the reason why I retired my featherweight and went on this journey that my husband is probably a little bit dismayed that I have been on for the last 20 odd years. But needle up and down is an important thing to have because you know that your needle is going to stay down in your fabric so you can safely take your hands off of it or it's going to be up and it's not going to snag on your fabric as you take it through. And you're also not going to have to go to the hand wheel and rotate it to get you where you want the needle to be. So a needle up and down button is super important for me to have on any machine that I own. The next thing I have right here, I'm going to kind of skip to the side, is my speed control. Where'd my fabric go? The Juki is, um, because they have industrial roots, it will go up to 1,500 stitches a minute, which is really fast. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Roger's going to be right here. So this is as slow as it will go. If you're one of those people that you're really trying to be super careful about where your stitches are, there are times when I literally go that slow. But I rarely will go this fast. Oops. That's 1,500 stitches a minute. I didn't have my hands on the fabric, um, and I'm not comfortable going that fast. I like to go slower than that. So that's what this button is going to give me, is the ability to control exactly how fast my maximum speed is. So now I've got the foot pedal pressed all the way down and I'm going significantly slower. So I can control how fast the machine is going at its fastest point, which is a big deal for me when I'm, not necessarily when I'm piecing, but if I'm doing free motion quilting, if I have an inexperienced sewer on the machine, I wanna make sure that the machine's gonna do what I want it to do and it's not gonna run away from anybody. The reason I have the foot pedal up here on the table is because of this button in the middle right here. I do the the uh, I do have the electronics for the thread cutter on here. So if I press this button, it's going to make a really cool clinking sound, which is the thread cutter working. And then I had can just pull my fabric to the side because the Juki cut the thread for me. But if I come back in and I do a little bit more stitching. The other thing that I have on the Juki is the ability to drop my heel on the foot pedal and that will cut the thread too. Same thing, I just press down with my heel instead of pressing down with my hand, or uh, instead of pressing the button with my hand, I just did a heel drop instead. So now I'll put that on the floor so it's out of our way. I'm done sewing at that point. I'm, when I'm ready to cut the thread, I'm not sewing. I really don't need to keep my eyes on the fabric. So you might wonder why I like to have that heel drop on there. And that's because it makes me sew just a little bit faster because instead of taking my head and my hands and moving them over to, grab, to push this button, I can actually take my head and my hands, reach over to where my next piece of fabric is while I drop my heel on that foot pedal and be picking up my next pieces while it's in the process of cutting. So it just makes me go a little bit faster. Um, and I, I don't know, I have an unnatural light for the, the sound of that thread cutter on the Juki. It just sounds- It's a nice good chunk. It is a really nice good chunk. I'm glad Roger appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the other thing I have is a reverse button right here. It's a big fat reverse button. So when you want to back up and reinforce your threads, you really don't have to take your eyes off your fabric. This is a big enough lever that you can reach over here, push it down and do your reversing to lock your stitches into place. The other thing I have on the front of the machine is the ability to drop the feed dogs right here. When I drop the feed dogs, then I can get all set up to do free motion quilting or God forbid actual darning on the machine, but we're gonna leave them up for today. So my goal is to kind of do a little comparison and contrast on all three of these machines. So let me go and do, oh, let me talk about the threading for a second first. Fully exposed threading. This, I've got spool stands back there that will take any size spool that you can throw at it. 
This is the tallest spool of thread I could find in the store. It is an embroidery thread, but there is still plenty of room to the top of there so that the thread can, thread can come off freely and go through the mast before it gets to the machine on any size spool. So if you have one of those huge spools of thread with 6,400 yards on it, you can put it on the straight stitch machines comfortably because it's got the clearance with the thread mast back there to take the super large cones of thread. You're not restricted to spools or mini cones. The threading is all exposed for me. Some people might like it, not like it. I do because I can look at a glance and make sure I have everything threaded where I want it to be threaded. I do have numbers on my tension dial right here. So even though it is um, a mechanical machine, I don't have electronic tension on it. I can know what my tension is because there are numbers on the top of this tension dial right here. I like that there is a, I'll just thread the back half of it for you. Let me put the foot up. Yep. Down there and there. So the take up lever here at the top, this one has got that opening to the back of it. So it's more like your domestic machine where you can just slide the thread in from the back and you don't have to see well enough to get it through that hole. And then when it comes to the needle threader, these guys are all the same in that the needle goes in sideways. The bobbin is actually under here. So the needle's pointing in this direction on all of these machines. You're gonna thread the needle from the outside in, not from the front to the back. They all do have needle threaders on them. Um, all of the needle threaders work. I guarantee you that they all work. They're just a little bit different than your regular needle threaders and you might have to work on them a couple of times before you really get it under control. So you're just gonna pull it down and pull that loop through at the end of it. It's as easy as that. Although I will admit freely that I've been having these machines in the store for a decade. And then I also have a Juki straight stitch at home. So I am very, very comfortable with that needle threader. And I practically did it with my eyes closed right there. They all do work. But the fact that this one is going to look easier is just a function of the fact that I have one at home. Not that anything else is not a good needle threader. When it comes to the bobbin, that's gonna sit in the side over here. They all have side load bobbins. So you need to get in the side to access them. I've got the included extension table on right now. So I can either slide that off or I can pop open the little access panel here and then lift up on the side and go in here and pull out the bobbin for myself. It is a metal L bobbin that's kind of industry standard on these machines, on these straight stitch machines. There's only a couple of exceptions that have larger bobbins. Most of them do have this same bobbin in here, along with a traditional bobbin case. That's what you're gonna find in these machines and they all come in from the side. So access is a little bit different than what you're used to, but that doesn't, different, not necessarily bad. So let me put that back in there. You're gonna figure out how to put the bobbin in blindfolded a lot quicker than you will get the needle threader down pat, I guarantee you, but um, easy peasy. The extension table is included and it does come off, but I've got it on right here. So I'm at two and a half and I'm kind of at a middle speed. So I'm just gonna do a nice straight stitch right down here. I've just rethreaded the needle and I just rethreaded the bobbin. So you know that those are in right. I didn't pull up the bobbin thread though, so I might end up with a little tangle down there. And this is a, um, this is one of our trade-in machines. So it's not a brand new machine. It's been around the block a couple of times, but the machine sounds really good. It's stitch, the stitches come out really well. I'm gonna, I love that heel kick. And so if I look at the stitches, they are, Oop, that's my thread that I didn't manage. I knew I should have pulled that thread up. Okay, so I've got beautiful straight stitching on the front and it's absolutely just as good on the back. There's no little 
weird sideways stitches. There's no skip stitches. There's no small stitches. All the stitches look great on both the front and the back. And then if I want to talk about other fabrics, um, cuddle or minky, depending on your point of view. Um, this is one of the harder fabrics for us to work with because it is, it is pretty slippery and it does like to stretch itself. So to work with that, I do have the ability to adjust the pressure on the presser foot right here. Um, I've got it right kind of in the middle land right now, but you might, as you work with this, you're gonna have to figure out what your setting is. It might actually wanna come up a little bit to get the right pressure on the presser foot. So if I'm gonna put that one underneath there, and then, there we go. We're just gonna let that kind of go to the end of the piece of fabric because that's where we end up with trouble. So I did get, uh, without any kind of pinning, the tiniest bit of stretching of the top piece with just the standard foot on. Of course, there's things that we can do that wouldn't let make that happen. I could have pinned it. I could have used a walking foot. I could have used a Teflon foot. But just for the sake of comparison, I chose not to, to see what the machine did all by itself. I do have a knee lift available for the Juki. I don't have it right here because um, I couldn't find it, which is kind of a funny story, which is even made funnier yet by the fact that I went home last night and was going to bring in the knee lift off of my Juki at home. And I couldn't find that one either. So I'm really not sure what's happening to all of the Juki knee lifts, but they're probably with all the left, with all the lost socks somewhere. And they'll, I'm sure they'll all show up this afternoon after I needed it. But I do have a knee lift on here. The knee lift is going to make it so that I can lift the presser foot without using my hands, but it will also let me get another couple millimeters into like an overlift position. Cause I have about a quarter of an inch of lift right here and I'll get up to probably about eight millimeters with the, uh, when I do use the knee lift on here. Another fun, fun thing about the Juki is that you can peek inside of it. It really, you think you're gonna come in there and you're gonna clean it out, but really there's not much that goes wrong. So there's not much that happens up there but I like the ability to open it. it just kind of, it's one of those things that just makes me smile. So 1,500 stitches a minute, straight stitch, speed control, scissors, needle up and down, zero to six millimeters for your stitch length. Comes with the extension table and it comes with the, the mystery knee lift. It also is going to come with, and I'm hoping that these walking feet stay in place, with your extra kind of basic feet. The foot that's on there is kind of, is a quarter inch compensating foot. It's not a traditional quarter inch foot like you probably have at home right now, but you also get included with it a really heavy duty walking foot. You get a free motion quilting foot and an adjustable zipper foot. There are other feet that you can add on as well, rolled hem feet and the like, but these are the feet that come with it. You do get spool caps and cones because you do have the ability to put those larger spools of thread back there. And you've got five of those bobbins that are gonna come with the machine as well. Um, and I forgot to mention the cover. So it also does come with a dust cover if you happen to not be sewing for that long or you wanna keep the cats out of it or whatever. So the Juki TL2010 is one of those, it's a standard in the industry. It is probably the one that we think of first when anybody starts asking us about a straight stitch machine. And that's because it's proven it's worth time and time again over the years. These models have been around for, this one's been here longer than I have. I mean, not this particular machine machine, but the Juki 2010 has been, Sewing Machines is Plus has been selling them for longer than I've been working at Sewing Machines Plus, which is, quite a while and I don't know that we really have anybody that significantly regrets it. Um, they are just kind of, if you're looking towards the future, this one, you can put it on a grace frame. 
you can put a stitch regulator on it, you can put a speed controller on it, and you can put the Innova AccuStitch on it. So it's a machine that can do more than one thing for you. It does only do a straight stitch, but you can feel completely confident putting it on a long arm, or sorry, putting it on a frame so that you can do free motion quilting with it like that. Um, and I think I've covered just about everything on the Juki. I do have two more machines back there. But let me go back to Blaine and see if he has any questions specific to the Juki. Thanks, Deb. Well, while you're getting the other machines switched up, we're going to talk a little bit about the Juki, guys. So again, Juki is a great, great machine. This is one of the most popular machines we sell with, with Juki. And guys, if you look right there right now, we have it paired up with that Gidget 2 table. And today we have a call-in special. And the reason we have a call-in special is the price of the machine is $8.99, but we have a combo special today uh, that's a call-in special because we can't advertise what we're selling this for because of Arrow's map pricing program. So uh, if you're looking for a great combination, a 2010 plus a table, now the Gidget 2 uh, has a wider opening in it. And so that opening is a... Um, I forgot what it is. Is it 20 inches, Kennedy? Um, for the Gidget? Yeah, the Gidget 2. 19. What's No, the opening. The Gidget 2 is bigger. It's 22. Oh, it's 22. I... Yeah, Kyle's going to bring it up real quick and tell me. But anyway, that, that opening is a, a little bit bigger than the Gidget 1. So what this is, you can actually put the machine, set it down. You can see how it would sit down through the hole. Now, they do sell... 23 and 3 quarter. 23 and 3 quarter is the opening. So... It's got a great opening on it. Now, what you can do if you wanted to get a custom insert from, you can order a custom insert as well, and we get those from So Steady, and they'll fix that, you know, fit it exactly to the 2010, where when you set that down in the Gidget table, you can put that clear, uh, you know, insert in there, and it makes it a smooth sur surface. So you have a huge area uh, almost like an extension table and how it, what it makes. It makes a huge extension table, but we have a fantastic special that they, today, this, the table is normally, uh, one ninety nine. We have a fantastic price on it today. If you buy it with the machine, but I can't tell you what that special is. You have to call in at 800-401-8151 and all the, the salespeople in the call center, they're all waiting, standing by on the phones. Uh, give them a call over there today if you have any questions on the on the machine or the table combo. Uh, but we have a great, great special on it as well. And uh, so anyway, that's that price. And um, so uh, while Deb's getting set up, oh, ooh, oh. almost sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Door, door, door Buster. Buster. That's why I almost sneezed because it's My door buster goodness. time. <laughs> All right, so guys, the door buster today, you we're talking about the Gidget 2, correct? It's 23 and a quarter inch opening or 23 and three quarter inch opening. So it's a big opening for that, you know, that machine. That those jukies are about 19 inches long. Okay, so it'll fit that opening. Now the Gidget 1 was the first table that came out, and it has a 17 inch opening. So it's made for some smaller machines. Guys, I have a great doorbuster special today. It's normally $149, $99 today. You can call in and get that for $99. And it is a great price on that machine. I mean, that's a big savings, Kyle. A big savings. I mean, today and today only, $89.99. Uh, big, big savings and a great price on that. Wait, wait. Yeah, what's the price again? Uh, $69.99. $69? Well, wait a minute. What? What did I say? Well, what did you say it was again? $89. I said uh, 99 Did you? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm taking cold medicine. I don't know what I'll say today. You know what? $69.99. Oh, my Whatever. Oh $69.99. Doorbuster special today and today only. Guys, that's way over half price. Way over half price. Got a call to get it right now, 800-401-8151. If you've got a machine sitting at home and you're wanting a great table for it, the Gidget 1 is a 17-inch opening. So make sure your machine is under 17 inches. It'll fit in there, and you can also get the custom insert for it as well. Uh, order that, and they special make those for, at So Steady 
It'll fit in there. It'll be a great table. And these are small tables you can put in the corner of your room, out of the way. They're fantastic. And Deb's got one in that she's going to show. And Ginger says, wow, that's a great. And then uh, Arnell says, great doorbuster. It is a great doorbuster, guys. I can't believe I'm selling this for $69.99. We're, we're not making any money on these things. We're giving them away. $69.99. Uh, what a great price on the Gidget 1. Now, the Gidget 2 is the ones that fit the straight stitch machines that we're showing today. And we've got a great combo special with that. But we're going to go right back to Deb. She's coming up now. We're going to show that Janome straight stitch. And we're going to show you the Gidget 2 table as well. And uh, so let's go back to the San Marcos classroom and let's talk to Deb. Hi, welcome back to the Thank San Marcos you. classroom. We've done a quick set change. Thanks to Roger's help. And I've brought the biggest of the bunch, the Janome 1600, down onto the table. And we actually swapped the table out for the Gidget 2 table. So you can kind of get a look at what that Gidget 2 table looks like in person. These legs are going to fold up completely flat so that it will go under, under a bed. And you do have some nice wheels on one end of it for when you're moving it around. Um, I can attest to the durability of these. A prior version of the Gidget was the very first sewing table that I bought. And I actually still have it at my house. It was from a different company back then. But other than some scar, some scuffs from pins and stuff on it, my original table is holding up just as well as anything else has. And that table is older than my daughter. So I can tell you that if you buy a Gidget, you can swap out the machines that you have. You can grow your machines over the years and just get a new insert for that opening. But the table itself is going to last for you. You don't have to worry that just because it's a smaller fold-up portable table that it's not a durable quality table because I guarantee you that they are. Now, what I can do with the Gidget that I could not... Um, is I can have this one go down into the opening. So let me kind of, so I have the opening right here. I think you can probably see it right here. I've got just a quick little lever down here and I'm just gonna support the weight of the machine because I don't usually do this with the machine. Oops. And then the machine can tuck down into the opening. You can see right now that the table is a little bit higher than the opening, but that is something that I can easily adjust down here. There's a chain that will let me adjust it to make my machine come out here completely flat on the Gidget. The only reason I actually got rid of, well, not the only, the reason that I was forced to get rid of to replace my Gidget, I got it, was uh, because my machine outgrew the Gidget. Um, but that was before the Gidget 2s came out. I have what would the Gidget 1 that Blaine, I think, was just talking about a minute ago. I do have a knee lift on this machine. So let me scooch a little bit forward here. Let me put that back on to there. So here is the Janome 1600. Janome is also a very old company. They've been around almost as long as Singer. And this is the biggest of the bunch. It is 19.6 inches long, so it is large, and it has almost the biggest opening here. When it comes to these openings, we're gonna probably tell you that they're like nine by five, and we're pretty close to right. They all, if you look at them, the openings look to be slightly different because they are slightly different. One's a little bit skinnier, one's a little bit taller, but I did the math last night, and they all are pretty much the same size. There is a difference of 1.5 square inches between the largest of the bunch and the smallest of the bunch. So 1.5 inches is like, is nothing. I was trying to figure out how, how big 1.5 square inches was. And then I rigor, figured out last night, I measured my thumb. It's the size of my thumb. The amount of difference between these three machines and the space to the right of the needle is an inch by an inch and a half or about the size of my thumb. That's not a significant enough difference to make any kind of decision on. That's They are all plenty big to do what you need to do. They all have from 48 and a half to 50 square inches underneath the arm right here, tons of space. So 
they all, for my purposes, are all the same size right here. I do have the buttons in different places on the Janome. You might see that I do have a different, um, a couple different buttons here. I have my needle up and down button. Still, I still have those basic electronics in here. And it's gonna highlight and show me whether the needle's stopping up or stopping down. I have speed control on here. The Janome 1600 will go 1600 stitches per minute. So it is the fastest of the bunch. I, and I have a bobbin winder up here. I have an independent motor for the bobbin winder on this machine. So let me, if I just kind of drop a bobbin on there and push this over, then I have an independent motor to wind the bobbin on this machine, which is something that I don't have on any of the other straight stitch machines that I have in the store. So you're not gonna use the, the motor that makes your needle go up and down to wind your bobbins with. You're gonna have an independent motor to do your bobbin winding on the 1600. Now over to the right, because they moved these buttons up here, over to the right, the only button that I have is for the thread cutter. So you really don't have to look over here to find the thread cutter button because it is the only button that is over here. So what I said before about being able to move my head to the left so that I can pick up my next piece of fabric instead of having to go to the right to hit to find the button, I can find the button very easily because it's the only button that is over here. Not a big deal at all. I do have the same kind of nice big lever to put the uh, to put the machine into reverse and go forward again. And for my stitch length, I have zero to six millimeters of stitch length here, but they moved the knob over to the right hand side of the machine and gave me a little window right here to see what those are. So I can still go zero to six millimeters for my stitch length, but to keep this front surface clean, they move the knob over to the right and you have to look at the button right at the readout right here to see exactly which stitch length you have. I have it set on two and a half because I'm trying to make all of these comparisons pretty equal. Same kind of exposed threading mechanism up here on this one. And I have the tension dial does have numbers on it. And I do have the ability to control the pressure on the presser foot on this one as well. So in terms of basic features, they all are pretty much the same. I do have an adjustable knee lift on this one. If Roger wants to show you the presser foot. Okay. If I lift by hand, it's going to lift a quarter of an inch. If I come over here and use the knee lift, I can get an extra two millimeters or about an eighth of an inch of lift off of there to get some of those thicker projects through there. And if that's not enough, I have my regular lift and then I can what I call overlift it to a half of an inch of space underneath there. So pretty much whatever you want to get underneath the needle, you're gonna be able to get underneath the needle on this one because I do have 12 and a half millimeters or a half of an inch of space underneath there. The threading is pretty much the same. I'm gonna show you the needle threader on all of them. I promised myself that I would. Same kind of ba basic thing going on right here. Oops, um, come on, Deb. There you are. All right, but it's a, there's not as much plastic on the needle threader. If you see when I pull it down, um, still works just as well. I do have to manually rotate it into place. And I, oop, I caught, but I did get the needle threaded on there. I kind of caught the needle, the thread on the needle threader that happens to the best of us. So, but I, I did get it threaded. Personally, I do prefer the Juki one a little bit more because it's got a little extra piece of plastic on there that I can use to make sure I've got the, pla the thread at exactly the right spot. But this one certainly gets the job done. I do also have the easiest access to the bobbin thread on this one because um, I have a plate that's just going to pop all the way off and then I have a side door that's going to fold all the way down. So I have the ability to get in here completely freely with my hands and pull out 
that bobbin case. Same size bobbin, same size bobbin case on all three of the machines that I have here today. I do like that that cover comes off because sometimes my hands are fumbling a little bit and I have a hard time getting the bobbin back out. So it's nice to have that fully opened for myself. I did find that it's maybe a little bit hard to put back on, but I'm okay with that. This is a metal plate and this is a metal machine and it's a brand new machine and it doesn't want to pop down, but I figure it's all metal. So a little thump is perfectly fine. It'll loosen up a little bit over time. I didn't have to press that hard on it. It's just not something I can do with one thumb, but I'd rather have it on there too tight than too loose. So, um, and then also on this one, full disclosure is that you cannot drop the feed dogs on the 1600. It is not designed to do that. But we know this and we know that a lot of people like to quilt with it. So we do include for you everything that you need to free motion quilt on this machine in the free bonus package that we include with the 1600. So you can free motion quilt on it. We give you everything you need, the foot and whatever in the bonus package. So you can free motion quilt on this one just as well. And you've got the speed control, you've got the needle up and down. So once you get the accessories that you need over here in the needle area, then you can free motion quilt on this one just fine. Put it on a small frame, put it in your table, do whatever, and it will free motion quilt for you as well. So I've got my foot pedal straight on the floor for this one because it is doesn't have any fancy heel cutting mechanism on there. Although you can get one as an option. So if you really like this machine the best, there is an optional accessory that you can buy and kind of add what I call a sidecar is add a small foot pedal to the side of your main foot pedal so that you can have a thread cutter mechanism at your feet as well as at your hands. Oh, look, do you like the minky that's on there? The cuddle? Mm -hmm. Turn it upside down. Cuddle sheds. We all know this. It sheds a lot. So if I go the slowest speed that this machine will go, it's about 70 stitches a minute. Hold on, let me make the needle go down. My thread back out of there. So, but we go like, it will go up to 1600 stitches a minute, like I said. Ooh, I have a hard time steering when it's not going that fast. <laughs> So let me cut that thread. Um, and I really don't pay attention when it is going that fast to how straight I can go, because I know I can't control it. So let me, let me actually put the bobbin back in again, because something felt kind of funky on the bottom. So let's put that bobbin back in one more time. Have it go so it looks like a cue for quilting in the bobbin case, in the slit, under the finger, opening goes up and into the machine she goes. And then a quick little thump. Good yes, good chunk. And actually I am going to pull the thread up after what happened on the other one. So there's my top thread, there's my bottom thread. And there's our stitching. Yep, it's better on the bottom now. There's a reason that we always tell you to turn it off and on and rethread it. I sometimes feel like the IT guy, but it really does make a difference. So let me go back in here and thread it and uh, run it off again for you. The machine sounds a little bit different, but it really doesn't behave any differently. It does have all the markings on the needle plate, which I like. And then if I put my glasses on, I have a nice straight stitch on the front and also a nice straight stitch on the back. So it did exactly what I wanted to. I have a beautiful straight stitch front 
and back on this one. I do have my fleece right here, my cuddle that's shedding all over everything. So if I put that down under there, let me make sure it's lined up. Oh, these two pieces are slightly different sizes. So there we go. And we give this one the little feeding test. Let me pull that other way. Take my pressure on the presser foot and bring that down a little bit so it's not dragging so much. Then this one seems to be feeding just a little bit better with the cuddle fabric than the Juki did. It stretched a little bit, but not as much as the Juki did. Also, again, I didn't pin anything, so I really wouldn't consider that to be a significant difference between the two machines. Um, if you look back here at the thread stand, you can see that it is, um, that this one sits a little bit lower. So I've got a regular cone of thread back there and you can't see it. If I put my spool of orophyll on there, it also sits down kind of low. So you're not really going to be able to, um, have your thread get in your, get in the way of kind of what you're looking at. It's free and clear back there. I can still put the biggest cone of thread that I have back there and it is gonna come with the cone holders so that you can use any spool of thread that you want to back there. And with the top feeding, it's all gonna come off really nice. Let me set those to the side. I forgot to do the denim on the Juki, but we've all seen it before. If I gonna go and do my uh, two things, the first thing I'm gonna do for you is my fake hemming. So right now I am putting a fake seam in the side of my denim fabric and cutting it. So this, even though I didn't cut it, we're gonna pretend that's just gonna be the seam um, that's on the inside of your jeans. And now if you're gonna hem them, you're gonna fold it up twice. I'm gonna fold it up a little bit more because I seem to not be. So three layers, nine layers, three layers back again. I'm getting a really good shot of this. Uh-oh. Roger really trusts this machine. Yeah. I really, I really <laughs> like the Juki. I'm curious about the Janome. The Janome actually will do just as well for you. It has the ability, it still has the ability to control the power. Um, I did read that will go up to 11 pounds of pressure on that foot if you really need it to. So it slid right up and over that for me. I didn't have to feather the presser foot at all to get that hem done. And if I look at it, I do see that the stitches shrunk a little bit as I kind of, as I tried to do that transition from three to nine, but probably if I would have adjusted the pressure on the presser foot, it could have compensated for that. That's one of those things where you just have to learn your machine. And then I also have here in my hands, 24 inches of denim. So most of the time, honestly, you're not gonna sew more than eight, nine layers of denim together. If you are doing bags, then there's places where it is gonna get thicker for you, where you are gonna be going um, into multiple layers if you're making bags and wallets and that kind of stuff, but I lost track. Hold on, <laughs> I'll start again. I was talking instead of counting. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll do 12 because I can do 12. I'm pretty sure that it will do more. With the regular presser foot lift, you can see it doesn't quite want to go under there. If I use the knee lift, it will barely go under there. But if I use the over lift, then I can freely position this and get it wherever I want to do my sewing at. Let me get my thread out of the way, find my foot pedal again, and I have to put the foot down first, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome for that lesson today. Um, I like to sew with foot up sometimes. No, don't do that. What I should have done, though, is increase the stitch length a little bit to account for the fact that I need extra thread in that stitch length. Yeah, I mean, and that's 
I was giving it a little bit of driving direction, but I, I'm not cheating and pushing it with my finger at all. And the thread cutter worked just fine. So if you look at it, you can see that I've got good solid straight stitches on the front and good solid stitches on the back. 12 layers of denim and it just went right through every bit of it. So you're gonna be able to do whatever you want to. It doesn't matter if you are making jeans, if you're a bag maker, we sell a lot of straight stitch machines to bag makers because it can do this. So when you've got all your seam allowances coming together and you still need to put binding on, you can know that you've got a machine that's gonna be able to do it for you and isn't gonna stall out with the needle halfway into the project. In terms of accessories, what I have, Oh, there's my magic scissors. Um, not as many accessories on this. Janome is um, kind of what I call, uh, I'm kind of thinking of it as choose your own adventure. There's a lot of accessories that are available for it, but they didn't include them in there so that you can get the ones that are most important to you and not be stuck with feet that you will never use. Kind of like that one perfect pair of scissors and buy the other ones that you need. You get the basics of what you need and then you can add on the rest. You've got a rolled hem foot that comes with it. We have a seam guide right here, which is gonna screw into these holes right here so that you can set yourself up with a quarter inch, a half an inch, a five eighths, whatever kind of seam allowance your project calls for. You've got your bobbins, spool caps, and uh, the cone holders that you put underneath those big spools of thread. And it all comes in this really nice plastic box Janome is really good about giving us good containers to put our pieces and parts in. And the 1600 is no exception to that. I've got the box that all of my bits and pieces come in. Um, I also have screwdrivers and thread nuts and extra needles and that kind of thing, but I chose to not put them on here and to just show you the feet that come with it. So rest assured, you do have extra needles, you do have extra bobbins, you do have thread nuts that come if you need them, but that's just not what I put right here on my display board right now. So the Janome is different. I mean, all three of these machines have different features on them. The Janome has a couple things that we don't have any place else, and that's in the bobbin winder right here. So I do have an independent motor for the bobbin winder, and it also does have the highest overlift of any of the machines coming up to 12 and a half inches. 12, <laughs> 12 and a half inches. Come on, Roger, wake up. 12 and a half millimeters or a half of an inch. Let's not put those two things together. Um, and I do have super easy access to the bobbin area because this top plate pulls, releases all the way off. So it's, it's almost like the bobbin uh, cover on some of the other machines, but it comes all the way off. So you've got really unrestricted access to get your hands in there and still be able to get your, be able to see what you're doing if you need to. Biggest machine of the bunch, she is 34.2 pounds. So she weighs, outweighs the other two by about 10 pounds because it's got these extra features that are built into here like the bobbin winder and things that are gonna add some extra weight and heft to it. Um, but it's the longest at 19.6, but it's also the narrowest at seven. So they all are slightly different in size, but it's really not the most important thing to me because I'm comparing features, not millimeters when it comes to which of these machines I think is gonna be the best for me or you can think is the best for you. So I did my cuddle, I did my straight stitch, I hemmed a pair of jeans and I went through 12 layers of denim with it. Um, and then the knee lift, I've showed you how on this one, this one is the only adjustable knee lift that I have. It has a little screw right here so you can unscrew it and you can adjust the knee lift to fit your table and how you sit at your machine. You can pull it out or in a little bit and you can rotate it a little bit so that it's gonna fit you the most comfortably. Um, and that's the only one, this only knee lift that I do have that's adjustable. Janome is the only company that gives me adjustable knee lifts, fun fact. Um, and so I think that's everything that I have on this one. Blaine, did you have any questions or did you wanna tell them about the 1600? Hey, I'm going to tell them all about this 1600, Deb, while you get the brother set up. And guys, again, this is the Janome 1600. This is the straight stitch from Janome. 
And again, you know, one of the things that, you know, I've always been impressed with this machine is how many layers of denim this thing will go through. It's got so much punching power. And again, you know, Deb talked about the weight of the machine. The reason this machine is so much heavier than a lot of the other machines too, is it's got that really solid aluminum chassis on it, cast aluminum chassis. And so it's got a, it's very well built. This thing, I'm telling you, will last you a lifetime. Uh, it is such a good machine. And again, guys, we've got a great combo on this. Uh, the price only is $13.49, but we do have a call-in special, a combo with that Gidget 2. And if you just want the machine only, we have a call-in special for it as well. So give us a call at 800-401-8151 to place your order. And uh, they can tell you all about the different machines that we're talking about today. And then, you know, Deb's coming up next. She's going to talk about the, the brother. We're going to show you that. But we also have a special today on the Baby Lock Accolade and uh, Accomplished. I'm sorry, Accomplished. And uh, so it's the, the Accomplished Baby Lock is the straight stitch. We're, and so Deb and I are going to talk about all four machines. And then we're going to give you our picks of the four machines because we've used all four of these. And, uh, and we're going to kind of give you the why we're picking what we're picking. So uh, anyway, and Deb and I actually agreed on the one that we picked uh, today. Uh, we both kind of got in there and just talked about, you know, the, the great features of each one of these machines. And, and so you're going to be surprised of which one we pick, and you're going to be surprised of why we picked it. And uh, so anyway, great, great machines. I know there's a ton of y'all out there probably watching right now that have a Juki, probably even maybe have the brother. But uh, anyway, I, I know you Janome fans out there, you probably, I don't have to tell you a lot about this Janome because you're going to know exactly uh, how great a machine this is. But again, I also want to remind you about our doorbuster today. That doorbuster is the Gidget 1. Now, again, the, the one we're comboing with these machines today is the Gidget 2. And it has a 23 and 3 quarter inch opening so those bigger machines will fit down in it. Now, the Gidget 1 uh, has a 17 inch opening so it'll fit anything any machine you have that's 17 inches or under will fit in that. And you, like I said, again, you can get those so steady, clear uh, custom inserts to put in. So you, it'll fill the space, the gaps around the machine and make it one big giant, uh, you know, basically extension table. And so you can do all your, you know, free motion quilting on and just, or have a great work surface. And uh, again, uh, that special today, I, I can't believe I, the cold medicine is really messing with me, Kyle. $69.99. Normally $129. I mean $149. Yeah, it's $149 is the normal price. Uh, Y'all can go check it out on Amazon if you don't believe me. $149 is the normal price on this. And we're selling it today for you, just the SMP Nation, for $69.99 and get yours uh, while you can get them. That price is only good today through close of business, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Once that is done, is done. I had to twist some arms at Arrow Cabinets to get the price that we're giving it to you today. And uh, you can, you can, Kyle can back you up on that. Uh, back me up on that, can't you, Kyle? Yeah, I was there when you were on the phone with Carla. You were <laughs> chewing them out. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so I had to really uh, talk to Harley at, at at Arrow to get these great, the great prices today. So uh, on these cabinets. So, but again, uh, that Gidget one, 69.99, 17 inch opening. And then the, the Gidget two has the 23 and three quarter inch opening. That's for the bigger machines. And we have a combo with that. Uh, we have a call in special for the table and we have a call in special for the machines and the combo of the machine and table. So uh, give us a call 800-401-8151. And uh, the whole call center crew over there is uh, waiting for your call. And I think Deb is ready. So we're going to go back to Deb. And she's going to talk about the Brother PQ1500 now, which is a very popular machine as well. So Deb, tell us all about that 1500. Hey, Blaine. I have done another set change here. I have the Brother PQ1500 SL, the third of the straight stitch machines that I'm going to show you today. Like I said before at the beginning, all of the machines have diff something different to offer. Every single machine has something unique that the other two machines don't have, which is why we picked these three machines to showcase today in the straight stitch shootout. Now try and say that six times fast. So the Brother PQ 1500 is going to go 1500 stitches per inch, just or it stitches per minute, as fast as the Juki will go for you. 
It does have a maximum stitch length of seven millimeters, but you're never probably going to make a decision based on that. So I've got it set in at two and a half, which is my favorite stitch length to have. You do have the same kind of bobbin winder that you have on the Juki. So you're just going to put your bobbin on there and push the lever over, put your foot on the foot pedal to get the machine to, to wind your bobbins for you. And the same exposed threading path that you've seen on all of them with the numbers right here to adjust your pressure on uh, your tension and a dial up here to adjust your pressure on the presser foot. So you've got the ability to control the machine mechanically here and then you've got some basic electronic choices that you can make over here. It does come with a knee lift. I am not gonna put the knee lift on because it, I had to angle the machine a little bit farther back, but do know that it does come with that knee lift. So I'm gonna set that down right there. When it comes to threading the machine, it is got the same needle threader that the Janome has on it, pretty much, where you're just gonna, I'm sure my hands are gonna be in the way of everything and I apologize for that. Where you are going to come down and come on, buddy. There we go. Some, oh, I didn't get it. Now the thread's tangled up there. So I get for trying to show off. Okay, under here, under there. It worked for me beautifully yesterday. And then I got a little loop there. Oops, I don't, I'll come back to that. Just, Hold on a second. I am, sorry, Roger. Okay. Full view of the back of Deb. I can just pan over the machine while you're doing that. So. If you're sitting directly in front of the machine, it is easy to thread. If you are sitting, six inches to the left of the machine, sometimes it's not so easy, but most of us are sitting right in front of the machine. So there's my loop. So I've got my thread pulled out right here. I do have an included extension table with the Brother PQ 1500 as well. It's gonna give me lots of space to the front and to the side, not as much to the back, but that means that it will fit in some places that maybe the bigger extension machines won't, or extension tables won't. I do have that access port right there for to get into the bobbin and then plate lifts up, door goes down. So I do have pretty unrestricted access down here. And then there again is pretty much the same exact bobbin and bobbin case that we've seen in all three of them. That same metal L bobbin is used across all three of these machines. Um, Janome does have one that takes a bigger bobbin, the HG9, but everybody else has got these metal L bobbins in them that are going to hold up forever for you. Close the door, close the hatch, and now she's ready to sew for me. I do have everything moved back over here on the Brother. So right here I have my dial, like I mentioned. I've got my stitch length, or yeah, stitch length. Too many machines that are too similar. My tongue's tripping a little bit on the third one. Sorry about that. So stitch length is right here. I can go from one to seven stitches um, in, my, in terms of my stitch length. I don't have a zero on this one, but that's perfectly fine because I can drop the feed dogs on this machine. I have scissors that are built in right here. I'll show you in just a minute. And then I do still have the electronics to con control whether the needle is going to be up or down for me. And that's just gonna control whether it's gonna stop up or it's gonna stop down based on whether that light is lit or not. Big fat reverse button here. Not quite as much travel as the rest of them, but it has enough travel to get the job done. And it's a little bit further away because I have something on the brother that I don't have on any of the rest of the machines that I've showed you today. And that has to do with the feed dogs. Brother has four feed dog positions. So it's not just up and down. I have 
four different ways that these feed dogs can be positioned on the Brother PQ 1500. Now, the first one that I have is um, all the way up. This is your regular feed dog position where the feed dogs are gonna come all the way up. And then I have a second position, which is the blue line right here on the front of the machine. And that is gonna be the feed dogs come up, but not all the way up. So if you've ever had any of those problems with um, silk or more delicate fabrics getting marked by your feed dogs, then this position is going to help prevent that from happening. If I skip all the way to the right, feed dogs down for free motion quilting. The feed dogs are all the way down right now. And the one that I have that you're probably not familiar with is the red option here. And that's the pin feed system. The pin feed system is only available on a very few straight stitch machines. And let me show you exactly how that's going to work for you. So I'm going to find a screwdriver and take off this foot real quick. And Roger's gonna see how well his camera can zoom. Let me get this thread kind of up and out of the way as well. All right. So we are looking at Roger right here. Okay. So here's your feed dogs. And at the back of this middle feed dog, you see a little tiny hole right there. That I can't see. Oh. <laughs> but there's a hole there. Okay. It's just an angle. That's all. There, there you go. You can kind of see it at this angle. Okay. So there is a little teeny tiny hole that's right there. And in that hole is a pin. And when I sew, that pin is going to go up and down as the needle goes down and up. So it's going to follow along with the feed dogs. So right now the feed dogs are going down and now they've come forward. Hold on. Let's re-engage the feed dogs first. Very nice pattern on your sleeve. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, Roger. I am, I am. Okay. We are having a slight technical moment right here. So we will put the machine back in its regular position. We will put the foot up. We will, oh, I don't have a foot on there. Well, let me get the needle up. I'm just going to make it sew for half a second here. And then I will show you this really cool feature. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. I just broke the needle. Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any needles right here, Roger. Uh, what kind of needles do you need? Just a regular one from, there's a bag over there. <laughs> okay, full disclosure, I tried to sew without screwing the foot on because I thought that I was going to outsmart the machine and the machine won. So that's what just happened there. Um, I have... Hello. Oh, that's my extra pen. I want this one. Well, hey, Deb. Yes, Blaine. That just shows you even the pros break needles. <laughs> <laughs> well, how else am I supposed to figure out exactly what the machine can do? I, because uh, I always thought I'm the only one that breaks a needle around here, but you, I, I'm, I'm actually happy to see you break one. It makes me feel a little better about my sewing. <laughs> oh well, I'm. Oh, that's the wrong one. They got these. I gave well, you hey, the I'm going to go ahead and tell them. We'll, we'll talk about this while you're trying to get that done, and I'll tell them a little bit about the uh, brother. Now, guys, she's working on the PQ 1500, my brother. And again, guys, uh, this is a great straight stitch machine. It has that great extension table on it. And again, guys, the price on this machine is $799. And again, we have that call-in special on the combo uh, it, with the Gidget 2 table that it'll fit in. And then you can also get that custom insert from so Steady if you want to make it uh, fit perfectly in there and fill in the gaps. And... Uh, but again, guys, give us a call right now, 800-401-8151 to place an order for this or to ask questions. 
And uh, we have a great special on this today, so give us a call. And then I also want to mention again that Gidget One table uh, that we've got the, the door, doorbuster special on it. It has that 17 inch opening and it'll fit, you know, make sure it's for the smaller machines. And again, guys, doorbuster special today. It's regular $149.69.99 today, today only, all the way until 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can call and place your order. Uh, and get that. But guys, that, what a great after Christmas special that is uh, for that table. And uh, we have plenty of them in stock. So, but again, uh, for that price, I just have a very few of them that we can sell for that price. So you have to be able to call and get it today uh, if you want one of those. And again, these combos, that Gidget 2 table now, it has a 23 and three quarter inch opening on it. So it's going to fit those bigger machines in it. And again, guys, these uh, tables are very portable, very lightweight, and they work extremely well. And especially if you want to make it, uh, if you use a SoCity insert to get that custom fit where it fills in the gaps around the machine, uh, it is a great surface to work, work on and a very easy uh, table. Y'all can see how small that is. It doesn't take up much room at all in your sewing room uh, and very portable as well. So great combo today. And again, guys, the brother, uh, you know, I know that there's probably a lot of y'all have the brother machines out there. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about these machines. All these machines are extremely fast. And I think this one is at 2,200 stitches per minute. Uh, and I think the Juki is at 2,200 stitches per minute. So they're all going to be over 2,000 stitches per minute on these machines. Now, Deb, we're going to go back to her when she's ready. And we're going to also talk about the Baby Lock uh, today. Now, the Baby Lock, we don't have it to demo it. We don't have it on the demo today because we really are, you know, pressing for time. Uh, so probably couldn't have got four machines in, but we do have a special on, on a claim uh, today as well. And uh, we're going to talk all about that with Deb. And then Deb and I are going to discuss, you know, all four machines and our picks. And I guess we could do that now since uh, we don't probably need to do any more sewing, Deb. So Deb, once you come back on and let's just talk about the four, all four straight stitch machines. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the pros uh, for, for each one of them. And then let's let's kind of reveal our pick and why we picked the one we did for the shootout today. Okay. All right. All right. So, what was your like? Uh, what did you take away from? Uh, let's start with the Juki. What what's your you know favorite feature and what is one of the things you really like about the Juki? On the Juki, I really enjoy the speed control on it, and I love the heel drop to cut the thread. That is. Yeah. One of the first things that I ever show anybody, it's one of those little things that you don't think is going to make a difference, but ends up making a very big difference at the end of the day. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, but, you know, I used that Juki, you know, 2010 when I did my quilt challenge. And I don't know if you remember this, Dad, but I kept having problems because my feet are so big. I kept hitting the heel on mm -hmm. the and cutting my thread. <laughs> remember that? I do. And you're not the only person that's ever had that problem. Yeah. So they actually, after, there is an accessory you can buy to kind of, it's just a rubber stopper that you yeah. can use. So if you have a hard time driving with just your toe, you can disable that feature. Well, I was going to say after I got used to it, then it was awesome. And I love that feature about it. It makes sewing a lot quicker when you can just, you know, hit the, the heel tap and, and, you know, cut your thread. So, but mm -hmm. you know, it took me a little while to get used to that. And uh, but again, that's a great feature. I like that feature. And I'll tell you something else I really about like the Juki. You and I did a show one time and I sold through 12 layers of denim with that thing. And it has so much punching power. That's one of the reasons the Juki is a very, you know, big pick for a lot of people out there is because of the punching power on it. Yeah. And they've been around. I mean, that's is the original straight stitch machine. Everything yeah. else that come after is trying to approve upon that original Juki straight stitch, which is, I think we have it available in four different versions right now, but they've had a couple of others over the years. So Juki has really had the chance to really refine this machine and truly dial it in for what most people are using it for. Okay. So we both agree with the, the features that you talked about. You know, I love the, the punching power. I love the, you know, the being able to cut the thread. So let's move on to the, the Janome. Now, Janome, you know, one of my, my features I'll tell you that I like about this is the chassis, how it's built. You know, it's a cast aluminum chassis that it adds a little weight to the machine, but this is one of those machines 
that it'll last a lifetime. I mean, you could have your grandmother's 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 machine and it will still be going. These are going to hand down through the generations, just like those finger featherweights have handed down from mother to daughter to granddaughter. <laughs> Absolutely. What's, so what's one of your favorite features on the, the Janome? Um, I like the fact that I have a button that positively tells me whether the needle's going to stop up or down on this one. I know it's going to stop on all of them, but this is the only one that kind of tells me at a glance. And I also like that the thread cutter button is the only button that's over here to the right. If I don't choose to get that extra accessory, I can still not have to do a full turn and look at the side of the machine to be able to cut the thread on it. So those are my two favorite things about it. Um, the independent motor for the bobbin winder is nice. Um, I have the easiest time getting the bobbin lined up to wind on the Janome. I think that's probably because it's a slightly different mechanism. So I personally have a little bit easier time getting the slot to drop down onto the um, onto the peg that's on the bobbin winder on the Janome out of the other two. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the brother. Now the brother, uh, you know, it's been a really popular machine for a long time as well. And again, I think, uh, you know, it's very comparable to the Juki to me. Uh, you know, I, I love the punching power on it. I like the speed on it. And then I also like, you know, that it comes with that nice extension table as well. So tell me what your favorite feature on the brother is. Well, it's two things, actually. It's this pin feed mechanism that will it, a little pin is comes up at the back of the feed dogs engages itself into your fabric and then travels with the fabric so you really have positive feeding of your fabric underneath the foot on the brother which is going to make it better for velvet for stretchy things for cuddle because everything is moving in the same direction all attached so on those slightly stretchier fabrics you don't have kind of that spring back that can happen sometimes so i really like that pin feed mechanism and actually the fact that I even have a low feed dog setting instead of just the regular feed dog setting. And then also when it comes to the brother, I get um, pretty much all the accessories that a girl could ever want. So I do have the walking foot and a seam guide. There's my free motion, adjustable zipper, traditional quarter inch rolled hem, um, compensating foot, and then um, another kind of feed guide right here. So I've got, oh, and the invisible zipper foot blended in right there. So I do have literally all the feet that I could want with this machine, unless you're gonna do something really specialty in upholstery. Everything that you need is right here. So you're gonna know that you have every single foot in your sewing room for every single project that you might wanna tackle. But Brother is always one of the most generous manufacturers when it comes to feet no matter what type of machine we're on. All right, Deb, so next up, we're gonna talk about the Baby Lock Accomplish, and I think Kennedy has an overlay, so let me put that up there while Deb and I talk about this. Now, again, guys, this is the Baby Lock Accomplish, and it's gonna be ex very comparable to the Brother PQ 1500, same There's weight, same speed, uh, some really good things. Really so Deb, what do you there. think? So like if you look at the accomplish, is there, is there anything different than the brother? Or are they pretty much got the same features that you like on both? That's going to have pretty much the same features that I like on both of the machines. The accomplish and the brother are very, very similar machines. They both have that pin feed mechanism in them, which is um, I think those are the only two machines that I do have that have that pin feed mechanism in there. And I have done quilts with cuddle before and I put every trick in the book and I still ended up stretching that cuddle but the pin feed mechanism, I think, would really have made that project a whole lot easier. Okay, and again, I want to remind everybody, the price on the, the Baby Lock is $999. And again, we have a call-in special on that, so give us a call if you're interested in the machine. And then also, we have that call-in for the combo, where you can get that Gidget 2 table uh, and make a combo out of it. So great, great specials on that. So let's go back to Deb and me. And um, so, Deb, one of the things that, you know, I want to tell everybody, and this is one of the things I, I noticed on them. We looked at all four of these machines. Now, three of them, you can drop the feed dogs. So that's the Juki, the Brother, and the Baby Lock. You can drop the feed dogs down. Now, the mm -hmm. Juki, I mean, the Janome, you can't, but you get that darning plate 
that covers up the feed dogs so you can still do free motion. That's correct. So that so, is yeah. that is the biggest downside to the genome that if you are a quilter, you are going to have to go through the steps of finding and attaching that darning plate when it's time to do free motion quilting and taking it back off again when you're done. Yeah. And I mean, you know, again, it's it's what they did is they instead of dropping the feed dogs on it, they just made a plate that covers them up so you can still do the, you know, your free motion quilting on. Uh, so it is something that, you know, you will have to change that plate. You can't just hit the button uh, like the other three machines. So, Deb, we you and I talked a little bit about all three machines. And, you know, it kind of comes down to if you're a, you know, Juki lover, I would get a Juki because the price is great on the Juki. Uh, if you're a, you know, Janome lover, great price on the Janome, a great machine. You know, the only thing that a little different is that darning plate. And then if you're a brother or baby lock fan, both those machines, great prices, identical type machines, they'll do about the same thing. But you and I kind of picked one. We looked at all the different features. We picked our favorite features and, the, and it came down to price. It was the brother. We picked the brother because of the $799 price point mm -hmm. for what you're getting with all the feet is a really good pick. So that's the who won the shootout to with me and Deb. We feel like the brother won the shootout today just because of the price. Don't you agree, Deb? Um, I agree. I have a Juki at home and I absolutely love my Juki. But having really honestly evaluate, I gave an honest evaluation of the brother for the first time in years as I was sitting looking at it the last couple of days. Um, and I didn't realize that it came with so many feet. And I really didn't realize how powerful that pin feeding mechanism could be for me. So even though it doesn't have the speed control on it, I'm with the current pricing that's going on. I think that the brother is the best value for your money. Yeah. And, you know, and, and too, we talked a little bit about the Juki as well. We were in, in you know, we, we kind of struggled with the Juki because again, you know, the pricing on them are so close. I mean, you're talking not $200 difference between the Juki and the brother and a hundred dollars difference between the brother and the, the baby lock. So again, it comes down to if you're brand loyal to a Juki, I would go ahead and give it a Juki. Uh, if you're brand loyal to the baby lock, you can't go wrong there. Uh, you know, but if you're just open uh, to any brand and you're looking for a great st straight stitch, you know, to me, you're right. The, the, you know, the, the, I guess the value for the money that you're getting, we would have to go with that brother just because of the price. And today we have a great call in special on it. Uh, and we have that Gidget 2 table that will go with all, all four machines and uh, great call-in specials on all four, great special on the Gidget uh, 2, and a great special on that Gidget 1. I mean, $69, Deb, that's a crazy price. <laughs> Blaine, I paid more than that for my Gidget table that I bought 20 years ago. <laughs> Because well, I paid like a hundred bucks 20 years ago for my table and it's, I could get a brand new one for less than I paid 20 years ago. Well, I'm blaming it on the cold medicine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deb. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show us a little bit about those machines and talk a little bit, you know, each one and highlighting the features. And, and uh, it was a lot of fun. You and I just kind of bantering back and forth, uh, you know, this week uh, talking about the shootout, which one we would pick and, and uh, we both agreed that, you know, on the machine and because it came down to, you know, basically you're getting a great, uh, you're getting great machines. All four are fantastic machines. You're getting a lot of value for all four, but just that brother, that price point, it, it was mm -hmm. kind of hard not to, to pass, you know, it's hard to pass it up. It really. is. It's hard not to pass it up. And it does come with the extension table that yes. I set off to the side here. So you've got the the extension table, the knee lift, it comes with a half a dozen feet, um, two, four, it actually comes with two, four, seven feet, two guides, eight, actually eight feet, including the one that's on there. It, it has so many things. It's got, uh, of the three of them, it has the medium size opening, but like I said, there's no difference significantly between the size on all of them. It's got the ability to control the feed dogs. It has a lot more than I remembered it having. <laughs> it is packed. It's, you know, great so. accessory pack, great feet, you know, that come with it. And then the table. So yeah, it's just, it's a great all around view. Well, Deb, mm -hmm. thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you on here again real soon. All right. Bye, Blaine. All righty.
All right, guys. So again, let me recap all these machines. The first one we saw today was that Juki, that 2010. And guys, this has been one of our most popular machines out there. Kennedy, you want to put that overlay up there one more time and we'll remind everybody what it looks like and the pricing on that. Again, it's $899 for this Juki. Again, we have a call-in special. You can combo it with that Gidget 2 table. It'll fit right in there. Uh, great call-in special on the Gidget 2 as well. And then you can also get a custom insert if you want to fill in the gaps around that machine and that table to make it really a slick, slick table for you. The next up after that was that Janome. Uh, the price is $1349 for the, for the Janome. And then we have a call-in special for it and the Gidget 2 table as well as a combo. And again, uh, this is the big boy of the, of the bunch. It's 34 pounds. And the reason it's going to have a little more weight because it has a little bit larger motor in it. It has a really strong punching power. Plus, it has that cast aluminum chassis that this thing is going to last and last and last forever. Uh, and then the next one after that was the brother. It was the PQ 1500. And again, guys, the price. this was the lowest price of the four at $799. A great price point. And like we told you, you're getting the extension table, getting all those feet. Great accessory pack that comes with it. And then we have a combo day call-in special for the combo on the Gidget 2 table as well. You can put with that. And then the last one was the Baby Lock. Uh, and again, guys, another, you know, this is the Accomplish, uh, another great state straight stitch. It's almost identical to the Brother. And again, uh, the price point is $999. Uh, getting a great accessory packet with this. Plus, you got a great call-in special on the machine and the combo of the machine and the Gidget 2 table. And then lastly, let's talk a little bit about the Gidget 1. That Gidget 1 table was the door buster today. And again, guys, we have it for $69.99 until close of business today, which will be 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, if you get your order in by today, you'll get that price, and then it goes right back up to the 149 price point. So again, great price on that. And uh, we had to twist some arms to get that those kind of pricing so we could pass it on along to you today. Uh, but again, if you are interested in that, give us a call at 800-401-8151. So hey, let us know right now in your comments what your pick is of the four. I'd like to see. I'm curious to see which one you want. Uh, you know, tell me which one you, you like the best, which one you think is the best value. And guys, I think it's time to give some stuff away. What do y'all think? Is it giveaway time? Well, hey, we're gonna we're gonna give away our machine from the after show. I think it's probably three weeks ago, and uh, we have a winner. We're gonna give her the Encore 260A sewing machine. And uh, who was that winner, Kennedy? Oh, Connie Humphreys. She was watching from Facebook. And when we tell you the after show, what that means is is after the show's over and the videos are posted on Facebook and YouTube after the live show, it, it posts the video, you can go and make comments underneath the video. You can make comments, ask questions, whatever you want to do. We pick every week in the after show, we pick up winner and we announce the winner the following Thursday. Uh, so, or the following next live show that we do. And so again, uh, you know, congratulations to Connie. And Connie, what we need you to do is go to smplive.tv Scroll down toward the bottom of that page. You'll see where it says claim my prize. Fill out all the information completely. Hit submit. And uh, once we get all that information, we'll get your new machine shipped out to you. Simple as that. All right. So today for the live show, for all you, you know, if you uh, haven't liked our YouTube page yet or, or, you know, subscribe, go subscribe to our YouTube page right now. If you haven't done it, uh, you know, hit that thumbs up, hit the bell notification. Anytime we put new content up there, it's going to notify you. And then if you're on Facebook, go like our page, share the video on your page, and that'll help you win on the live shows. And guess what? We're gonna give away some of our world famous event bags. And these, uh, they come in eight colors. You see the eight colors right there. Uh, they're $9.99 each on our website or $49.99 for the bundle of eight. We're gonna give two of you out there right now a bundle of these bags. Everybody loves these bags. And here's the thing. You want these bags because when we have our show for Fabric Palooza, you'll be able to fill them up with fabric. That's going to be pretty cool. So, Kennedy, do you have that wheel ready? Okay, everybody out there with me, I want y'all to say this with me. Kennedy, spin that wheel.
Marley's Mondler? Is that how, how you say Mondler? All right. So Kennedy spin that wheel, uh, Esther Sane. So Marley's, you are our winner. Marley's is watching today from YouTube. So you won the bag bundle. Just go to smplive.tv. Uh, scroll down till you see where it says claim my prize. Fill out the information, hit submit, and we'll get the bags right out to you. All right. We are ready to give another bag set away. And Debbie is telling you what to do, Kennedy. She's saying, Kennedy, spin that wheel. All right, Sharon, Sharon, I know Sharon. She is a quilter, so congratulations, Sharon. You just won a bag bundle, uh, and we will get that shipped out to you. Sharon is local. She is uh, lives out in Valley Center, California, and uh, she comes in our store all the time. So congratulations, Sharon. Uh, that is awesome. So Sharon, just go to smplive.tv and uh, scroll down toward the bottom of that page where you see claim my price, fill out the information, hit submit, and we'll get those right out to you. All right, so next up, we're gonna give away one of our world famous sewing mats. And when I say world famous, guys, we have sold these worldwide. So that makes them wor worldwide famous, right? All right, <coughs> excuse me. All right, so Kennedy, spin that wheel. Karen T. So Karen T, you are the winner. She's watching from YouTube today. So Karen, let me tell you a little bit about the sewing mat. And I always say this to everybody, right now, if you do not own a sewing mat, y'all that are watching, if you don't own a sewing mat, you're doing your machine a disservice. And the reason I say that is that this thing is very functional. They serve a purpose. They reduce the vibration your machine makes and transfers to the electronics. And guys, let's face it, we're spending a lot of money on these machines now, and they're all computer and electronics. You want these things to last as long as you possibly can, and reducing that vibration will really make the machine last longer, and that's what these mats do. They also dampen the noise that the machine makes, so it makes it extremely quiet, and they also protect the service. If you have a really nice table, you wanna put you on their kitchen table, a counter, or anything, or a nice sewing cabinet, you want to protect the top of it, you can put the mat right on the top and it protects it. And the other thing it does, it's anti-slip. So you can't push these things around. So when your machine sits on it, it kind of sinks in the, the, the mat just a little bit and it doesn't let the machine scoot around. So it really serves a purpose. We love these things. So we're, again, uh, we're gonna let you pick your size, your color, uh, and when they come in four sizes, and so if y'all want to look and see what the sizes we have, just go to, uh, you know, you can go to our website, sewmachinesplus.com, or you can go to smplive.tv, and you'll see the match. You just click on it, it'll take you to that product page, and you can see the dimensions, the size of each, each of the sizes, the extra large, you know, the large, medium, and small, and it tells you the dimensions. Uh, so that way you can pick the one. But you can pick your color and your size, let us know. You can go to smplive.tv to claim your prize. Scroll down to the bottom, fill out the information, let us know the size and color and we'll get your match tipped out to you. All right, let's go, let's pull one more winner on that, Kennedy. Let's spin that wheel again. And Linda Brooks says, Kennedy, spin that wheel. <laughs> Sue going Mac. Killup, is that right? Sue going McKillop. Kill it. All right, Sue, if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize, but Sue is watching today from Facebook. So congratulations, Sue. You just won yourself a sewing mat. You can pick your color, your size, and just go to smplive.tv to claim that prize. Scroll down to you see claim the prize, fill out the information, hit submit, and we will get it shipped out to you. All right, next up, we are going to give away a $100 gift card to Sewing Machines Plus. And again, guys, if you win one of these gift cards, you're local. If you're in the San Diego, Southern California area, you can go down to our San Diego store on Mission Boulevard. 
or you can go up to San Marcos, California at Nordahl Center and you at Nordahl uh, Road and 78 Freeway. And you can go to either one of those stores and redeem it. Or if you're out of the state, anywhere else you want to shop online, you can at checkout, you put the gift card code in there and it'll take $100 off your purchase. So it's pretty cool. All right, guys, we are going to spin the wheel for a winner of the gift card. So Bernadette Evans, Kennedy, yes. spin that wheel. Oh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Spin that wheel, Kennedy. That's what Bernadette said. No, she said spin that wheel, Kennedy. All right, there's our winner. And that's Sharon Sasher. Sasher. Sashar. All right. We're probably saying that wrong. So Sharon Sasher. All right, she Sashar. I don't know. I can't ever get names right. So all right, Sharon, she is watching today on YouTube. You just won yourself a $100 gift card. So to claim that prize, just go to SNPLive.tv, scroll down toward the bottom where it says claim the prize, fill out the information, hit submit. And once we get that information, we will email you back a gift card number, certificate number, and you can use that at checkout. All right, and for our grand prize today, we are gonna give that an Encore 260A sewing machine away and what a great machine this is and guys if y'all never seen this machine we did a challenge on this one time a couple years ago when we first came out with this machine and we compared it to some eight nine thousand dollar machines out on the market and we did a test of the stitch quality and compared them and we showed everybody and nobody could pick which one it was it was crazy how good the stitch quality this is so this is a great machine if you want to uh, you know, take it to retreat. Very portable, extremely lightweight. And we're gonna make somebody a very happy person today. So is that Nana? Spin that wheel, Kennedy. Compliments of Nana. Thank you, Nana. And then Cindy King says, spin, spin, spin. <laughs> Kathy's Corner. So Kathy's Corner is the winner of the 260A. So congratulations, Kathy's Corner. She is watching today from YouTube. So Kathy, make your way to smplive.tv. Scroll down toward the bottom where it says claim a prize. Fill out the information, hit submit, and we'll ship you a machine so we we'll receive your information. Very good, guys. So another great show today. Uh, you know, I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the shootout. Uh, I, you know, Deb, as usual, is always awesome. <laughs> Kyle and Kennedy back there are shooting me with their finger guns. And uh, so uh, another great show by Deb. You know, she is such a good demonstrator and she makes it easy to understand. And that's why I love having her on the show. But guys, don't uh, miss next week's show. Next week's show is our 100th episode celebration. I can't believe we've already been, uh, this, it'll be 199 today, 99 episodes. Uh, but we're going to have the 100th episode next week. I have got some special guests going to stop by and we're going to have some good specials on machines. We're going to pick their brain about what their, their pick, maybe their go-to machines. And uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to celebrate with a lot of good uh, giveaways as well. So don't miss next week's show. It'll be at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 12 p.m. Central. And it'll be Thursday next week an excellent end of 2022 show noreen says great show thank you smp renee linda brooks says happy new year so uh it will be a new year so it will be a new year i hope uh, everybody has a safe and fun new year's eve and a new year and you're going to help us kick off the uh, 2023 with our show next thursday and uh celebrating our 100th episode celebrating the start of a new year and guys all i can tell you is we have been working extremely hard behind the scenes to plan a lot of cool stuff in 2023 and uh so we're, we're uh and we might even have some surprises next week for you that you're going to absolutely love so we want you to make sure you tune in and uh anyway hope you guys y'all have a great rest of your week be safe this weekend and we'll see y'all next thursday so long